Okay, Shalom, Shalom. Kwame Yashala, Koholo Yimla. Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rekha HaKadash, double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwath that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, to the best of their ability. This is Yahshanan Nawaf, just coming at you with another quick lesson and praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And I seen this article kind of made me think of IUIC, you know what I'm saying? Um, that Israel united in Christ camp, you know, that they got it just so they just cannot take the fact that grape is in the, the scriptures and a lot of other hardcore subjects are really in the scriptures, man. The elder um, Yashawamba, he went into, um, you know, uh, our lineage as far as our forefather Judah and how the lineage carried on. You know how he actually had sex with her, with, with with his daughter-in-law, and that's how the you know the lineage carried on to, you know, and, and it all landed down on Yahweh's side, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Our lineage is is pretty buck wild in the scriptures, man, and it's a lot of it's a lot of um, things in the scriptures that people just find to be so unbelievable, especially when it comes to Christians. But see, when you come into this truth. 100% truth that GMS teach you go you go you got to accept it all you got to accept everything that's in the scriptures man whether it sound bad or not you know it the bitter with the sweet man you have to it is it, you know because the Lord he created everything in tools there's going to be some bitter and there's going to be some sweet it's sweet at first then you get off into some of the bitter parts of it you're like well damn <laughs> but you know the real men of Yahweh by Shemel Shah they're going to accept it regardless so I seen this article right it says the way she's trying to defend it. And this is this um, young lady talking about her mother. She says her horrified daughter discovers her parents are cousins, <laughs> but her mom's a okay with it. Okay. So now in the scriptures, there's plenty of that going on in the scriptures. It's actually situations where, you know, uncles that marry nieces. Matter of fact, the scriptures talks about how Abraham was, um, you know, when Sarah was sisters and brothers, you know, I mean, and it's so many other situations, you know, it's just, it, it's a, that lineage, man, of, of the Israelites is a smorgasbord of, of, of beauty, man. <laughs> a little weird here and there, but man, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, the Lord is, you know, the author of this whole book, man. You, you have to accept the Lord, Yahweh Shai, in the volume of the book. You have to accept the book. You just got, you can't, you know, and that goes with accepting the fact that, the Lord only chose Israel and that he's only dealing with Israel and he's only dealing with the elect of Israel, you know, because you got these Christians, you know, they done switched everything up. The Lord loves everybody. You know what I'm saying? You can do as you want to do, you know, oh, there's no way that, you know, a man can have multiple wives and all this other stuff, man. But the, the nation of Israel came from four different women. It's all through the scriptures that the men had multiple wives. King Solomon. And if you can, you know, if you have ears to hear, King Solomon was also Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, you know, in the re reincarnation. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. King David had multiple wives. All through the scriptures, it was multiple women. But they, you know, you, you, you say that to a Christian these days and they just like, oh, well, well, we throw that part of the book out. But, you know, the Lord loves everybody. So you got to just you got to really just accept that 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 the, the book man is bitter and sweet man you know you just if you can't i mean because the lord only dealing with the elect of israel anyway we know everybody not gonna get the book but i've seen this so let's let's play a little bit of this that's like you let's see <laughs> and she's in utah <laughs> and i may have to back it up so i think uh, um i'm a little bit ahead in it let me come out real quick and go back in. And she's bugging out. She, this chick is bugging out that her, her, basically, I, I, I would assume they're like third cousins. I'm not sure exactly how that goes. Her grandparents, her granddad. Let's see, let's see, Slakia. Listen, Dad's grandmother. And my grandmother were first cousins. <laughs> and she's in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 
back here. I, well, we're that, about to find out. That could be what's wrong all this time. No. Don't allow first cousins to marry. It doesn't. I'm not worried about married. I'm worried about fucked up kids. We're third gener. We're third cousins. After third cousins is when you're supposed to have a baby, not before. <laughs> You should have looked into that a little bit. Well, I thought if you could get married, the reason why you couldn't get married was because of genetics. No, I think it's, you really shouldn't be having a kid with your second cousin either. And maybe not your third. Oh, I'm sure third. <laughs> uh, we're nothing like the earlies, let me tell you. They didn't tip a bottle. Okay, and there you have it. So, I mean, and when you go into the laws, you know, I kind of Googled some of this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And basically, you know, it's a few different things people said. This person says, if your grandparents are first cousin, it does not mean, it does not mean much. Certainly not to worry about genetically unless they both carry genes for some of the more difficult health issues. And those genes were passed down to you. And looking back to the 1600s and my ancestry, I have found five get that five first cousins marriages and some three or fourth cousin marriages it is very common in small townships throughout the world and is rarely illegal but you know see esau is known you know it's it's a lot about you know you know it's a lot in the americas where you know it's a lot of um that daughter on dad um um shit you know that went on Mo mainly you know the dad doing things to his daughter and also brothers doing things to the daughters, you know, when it comes to the so-called um, white race or the Edomites, you know, that that's that that that's that was really big throughout the world. But here in the Americas, most definitely. And, and don't get me wrong, that that should be happening amongst um, um, Jake too, so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, you know, where, where uh, uh, you even have um, sons sleeping with moms, things of that nature. Sisters sleeping with brothers, brothers sleeping with sisters, motherfuckers sleeping with their aunties and uncles. And and that's where the law came in at. So now when you go back to um, let's go back to Genesis real quick. Let's see something real fast. Right. But like I said, again, you know, you, you get the good, bad, and the good, bad, and the ugly in the scriptures, man. Can't shun none of it, you know, because, it, it, you know, a lot of this stuff had not gone down. The nation of Israel wouldn't even be, exist, man. <laughs> You know, but let's go to Genesis chapter 20. You know, people be, ah, oh, that's so disgusting. Ew. Nah, man, it's all kinds. It's been all kinds of first cousin on first cousin, second cousin on second cousin, third cousin on third cousin. Loving out here, man. This is Genesis 20, and let's see. Hmm. So now this is a situation with um, our forefather, Abraham, right? Let's let me start up some. Let's get, get some context on the story, because Abraham, he was basically afraid. He told Sarah to tell Amalek that that she was his sister because she was so beautiful and he didn't want to get killed. You know, so let, I'm going to read it in the NLT. Let's see how it reads. Abraham deceives Abimelech. Verse 1, Genesis 20 and 1. Abraham moved south to Najib and lived for a while between Kadesh and Shur, and then he moved on to Gerar while living there as a foreigner. Abraham introduced his wife, Sarah, by saying, She is my sister. So King Abimelech of Gerar, Gerar sent for Sarah and had her brought to him at his palace. So, hey, he ready to knock Sarah down. Sarah was nice looking, man. So the king of that particular place was like, hey, go get her. Tell her to come up. And you know, hey, you weren't resisting no king's um, orders, man. Verse three. But that night, Yahweh came to Abimelech in a dream and told him, you are a dead man. For what woman you have taken is already married. So this is how we know that. Also that um, how adultery is, is, is punishable by death. You know, the ancient world was far different than what's going on here in the Western world. So you got these Christians, they read the, the Bible with a Western mindset, an American mindset, and don't know that 
it can't it don't go together. You have to read the scriptures with an ancient um, um, spiritual thought pattern, man. You can't read the Bible with a with an American mindset. That's why these Christians are. Um, there's no. From an and that way, an innocent nation <laughs> didn't Abraham tell me she is my sister and she heard and she herself said yes he is my brother so they both then told him that he was just thinking like you know shit man she bad I'm about to shit I'm about to hit her I done hit a lick one of these badass Israelite women I done hit a lick Sarah out here Probably, man, don't tell her how she was looking. You know, because, you know, it's all through the scriptures, man. The sisters was beautiful. Just like how they beautiful now. And there was a lot of a lot of heartache, a lot, of, a lot of death, a lot. Same shit that's going on now with man and woman. It was going on back then, man. So ain't nothing changed. And people be be trying to be all damn extra spiritual or extra uh, holy and shit, man. It says, um, I acted in complete innocence. My hands are clean. And it says, in the dream, God responded, yes, I know you are innocent. That's why I kept you from sinning against me and why I did not let you touch her. Now return the woman to her husband and he will pray for you for he is a prophet. So Abraham was a prophet. Then, then you will live. But if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that you and all your people will die. God, Lee. And Bimelech. <laughs> so we're going to get to the point here in a minute. And Bimelech got up early the next morning and quickly called all his servants together. When he told them what had happened, his men were terrified. Then Abimelech called for Abraham. What have you done to us? He demanded. What crime have I committed that deserves treatment like this, making me and my kingdom guilty of this great sin? No one should ever do what you have done. Whatever possessed you to do such a thing? <laughs> Abraham replied, I thought this is a godless place. So Abraham like, man, these niggas are some heathens. They ain't, they ain't about to respect the fact that this is my woman. They will want my wife and will kill me to get her. So this is what he was thinking. And she really is my sister. See, this look, check out what he said. And she really is my sister, for we both have the same father, but different mothers. And I married her. See that? So our forefathers and foremothers was actually brothers and sisters. Think about that for a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Think. think to. You know, but just, you know, and, and, and people all up in arms about a man of Israel, you know, dealing with a woman of Israel as well. But, you know, some distant, 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 maybe six, 10th, 12th cousin or some shit. And he done dealt with her on, you know, and, you know, then basically just snatched her up and graped her. There's laws on grape. So as you see in, 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 this, in this situation, this was before the laws were implemented, right? Yeah, he, hey, this dude almost caught the business, man. Let me see, though. Yep, and Abraham, uh, verse 11, 11 in the KJV, and Abraham said, because I thought, surely... The fear of God is not in this place and they will slay me for for my wife's sake. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. So you 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 overrighteous ass Israelites realize this here and had this not happened. None of you Negroes would even be here. None of you blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans would even be here. Because this was a union that was by Yahweh, by Shimei, was shy. Times were different. Of course, you wouldn't marry your sister now.
Because really, in reality, it, on, on, on a father's side, that's really like your full sister in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Even though that's not, you know, they don't have the same mother. It's almost because, you know, the father carries the seed. So, so what do you do in a situation like this? Do you shun the whole Bible? Right? As a matter of fact, hey, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's clear. It's clear. And sometimes they be having commentaries on this. Okay, so this commentary right here, they're not going all up into it real, real deep. I mean, they basically like uh, what poor defense Abraham made. The, the, state, the statement absolved him from the charge of direct and absolute falsehood, but he had told a moral untruth because there was an intention to deceive. Uh, honesty is always the best policy. Abraham's life would have been as well protected without the fraud as with it. I can agree with that. And what shame to himself, what distrust to God, what dishonor to religion might have been prevented. Let us speak truth, every man, to his neighbor. Zechariah 8 and 16, Ephesians 4 and 25. And, you know, I mean, we got to kind of place ourselves in the, you know, in the, in the, in the shoes of him, so to speak. Because, you know, Abraham was just kind of getting to, you know, he, he, he was freshly pretty much all, overall taken from his land. You know, left his father's house, you know, to do what he was doing. And he's still moving. You know what I'm saying? He's still, but he had faith, though, you know. It goes on to say that he was, he had faith and that he was a friend of Yahweh about Shem you know. So, you know, it, you know, it took some time for him to, and, 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 and this right here, I'm sure it was a faith booster, too. Because Abraham left there with um, quite a bit of substance. They, they set him up, man. They set him up real nice, you know what I'm saying, before he dipped up and left that place. But anyway. The point that I wanted to make is, is that, hey, they were sisters and brothers. So what do you do with that, right? And uh, what was that? Um, Genesis 11. So the history going back, back, you know, it's, you know, hey, it is what it is, man. You see, there's plenty of fucking women out here that had children by their dads. Hell, even with the, even with the situation with Lot, think about Lot. And Lot was considered to be a righteous man because he stood in the gates, man. He seen all the wickedness that was going on inside of Mingle Moore. But guess what? Two nations came from him and his daughters, Ammon, which would be the so-called Japanese today, and, and uh, Moab, which would be the so-called Chinese today. His daughters got him drunk and slept with him. So what about that? See? So these guys, they get to talking all that shit, you know what I'm saying, about, you know, and one of, pretty much overall what they be doing is, you know, they, they pretty much are um, catering to the women of IUIC. You know, they have a lot of women there. They cater more to them. And I could see in that one video where they were trying to make it seem like, you know, the apostles was just these horrible grapists. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and not only was they, you know, slandering them and calling them grapists, they was slandering them and calling them pedophiles like they was dealing with little boys and shit. You see? Now, shit like that is in the scriptures, but that was real slander that they, you know, that they done, you know, on our apostles, man, because that's not true. You see what I'm saying? Because the apostle of Tahar, you know, they got an older video of Tah Apostle Tahar. He's explaining how, you know, the law of great went down. When things went down, the Lord had a situation for it. It just is what it is. He had a law for um great, man. But these dudes, man, they don't get it. They don't, uh, you know, they, they, they can't fathom the fact that um women were getting um, um married at 12 13 years old as soon as they hit their flower or their their monthly um cycle 13 14 well no no, no really no there no chick it is it, it's rare that a, a chick would have been 15 years old getting married she no she'd have been already had a, a child or two by that point that was just i mean it's biblical that's just the way that it was so um let's see what this one is genesis 11 Now, this is going off into, um, Abraham's brother mar marrying his niece or, or Abraham's niece as well. The family of Terah. Verse, so let me start at verse 27. Now, these are the generations. Let me, I'm gonna, uh, let me start it. Let me get it in the NLT, the New Living Translation. This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram. His name was Abram at that point. 
Nahar, and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. Right? So we know that Haran, um, Haran passed away. And that's how Lot, Lot took Abram. I mean, um, Abraham, Abram took Lot with him, you know, his nephew. Right? But Haran died in Ur the, uh, of the Chaldeans. So Lot's dad died. The land of his birth, while his father, Terah, was still living. Right? Meanwhile, Abram and Nahar both married. So the other two sons married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarah, of course. And the name of Nahar's wife was Milcah. Milcah and her sister Iscah were daughters of Nahar's brother Haran. So what does that mean? He married his niece. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And, and the scriptures don't say nothing that, you know, nothing was wrong with it. You know, but now, you know, when you go into the law, and I don't think it was nothing wrong with it even in the law. Um, let's see, though. But this was another situation, too, as well. Let's get let's get this real quick. We're just setting it up. Genesis 38 and 11. Uh, let me see where we can start at. And this is going off into, um, you know, um, Judah. If you're familiar with Judy, he had two sons. Both of them died. The third son, or he had three sons. The third son, he he's supposed to give to um, supposed to give to his daughter-in-law Tamar when he got older because he was a kid. So she was supposed, you know, the story set up is Judah told her to go to your father's house. This was serious times back then. She wasn't just like, oh well, my husband is dead. I'm going to find me a new nigga. No, it was it was order back then. Because there was property or ownership of, of a woman, so to speak, back then, you know, and it just is what it is. And that's going back to the way that it was in the kingdom. man. we're going back to that. So basically, the two sons, both of them was, you know, uh, one, the first son died. Um, Judah told the second son to go into his brother's um, wife because that was custom, too. So think about that. Think about that. That's a law where if your brother, if my brother were to die. Say if I were to die, my brother was to go in to my wife and carry on my seed line. He was supposed to go in and marry my wife and have sex with my wife and carry on my seed line. So think about that. I ain't even I forgot about that one. Think about that for a hot sec. In today's time, I can't believe it. It's such a scandal. It's on World Star Hip Hop. It's on TMZ. Oh, fucking shit. I can't fucking believe it. He's he's with his 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 brother's wife. He's not even freshly a corpse yet. See, our times and our um, history was different, man. So as the story goes on, what happens is a third son is not old enough to marry her because he's supposed to go into her now. Once he got old enough, our forefather Judah didn't give him to didn't give him to her or didn't, you know, match him up. So. Judah's wife had died at that point in the game and he was just like, you know what well, shit, I'm just going to go and just go do some stuff. I'm going to chill with one of my homies, so to speak. And, um, you know, he, he, he wanted to get some box. He came, you know, he wanted to go and hit off a prostitute. But Tamar, she had positioned herself in that particular city or corner and, and wrapped her, you know, her, her head with a veil or whatever and, 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 and acted like she was a prostitute. And she slept with her fucking um, her, her daddy, her father-in-law. <laughs> and and that's where uh, uh, the next part of the lineage comes in. That that's all a another piece to the puzzle or connection to Yahushai. In the same matter of fact, let's see where it's at. The a hey, all this right here. When you when you go into Matthew chapter one and you get the lineage of Yahushai, or which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Hey man, this is a smorgasbord of shit going on. Here it is right here, verse three, and Judah. Be, begot Faraz and Zarah of Tamar. Those was twins. Tamar had twins by our by her father-in-law. And one of those twins was Faraz. And that's the family lineage that's going on, continuing in verse 3 right here of Yahweh's side, Matthew chapter 1. So think about that for a minute while y'all all up in arms and all going crazy as hell about grape. About a, a man seizing a woman. 
It wasn't like the brutality that Esau, Edom, the so-called white man done to a woman today when slavery was going on. See, Esau was brutal. It wasn't like that. See, when we see American society, they think of um, grape. They think of, you know, she's got black eyes or lips are busted. They show her in a movie. You know what I'm saying? You can barely recognize her. You know, like um, what was that on um, Players Club? Was the chick, you know what I'm saying, got caught up in the room? You know, got her ass beat. No, it wasn't like that back then. It was just, hey, he just took her up, penetrated her, and humbled her, man. You know? Sure, you know, brothers, hey, brothers is a lot bigger, stronger. Hey, brothers big and strong now. But back then, shit, you know. <laughs> or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But if she was betrothed, if she was, um, you know, um, 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 betrothed or, or what they call today, um, engaged to, to a man and she cried out, that nigga was through, you know, he, he, he was up for death, man, death sentence. And there were situations where she didn't cry out. So if it was found out, they was both put to death. It's just, it's simple, man. Anyway. And then, you know, of course you got the uh, Levitical laws on, um, you know, who, you can sleep with and who you can't sleep with because this is when the law came along because there was a lot of um, shit that was going on, you know what I'm saying, amongst these other nations. But you got to realize that, hey, the things that was going on in the scriptures, a lot of that stuff still going on to this very day. But people, you know, they kind of look at it like, you know, like, oh, that's the Bible, though. Oh, right, man. Hey, look, the whole chapter right here, Leviticus 18, pretty much. Um, for um, it's entitled "Laws on Immoral Relations" in the KJV, the King James Version, and forbidden sexual practices. That's how it's entitled in the NLT. And as you go through it, you yeah, you get the list, man. Let me see where it starts. It starts at um, verse six. You must never have sexual relations with a close relative, for I am the Lord. Do not violate your father by having sexual relationships with your mother. See, she is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. And hey, that's that. That's a hey. It's not a common thing, but it happens. Verse eight: Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives. What does it say? Father's wives, multiple. Let me get that in the NLT. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. But now in the NLT, they got it right. Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives. Right. For this would violate your father. And, and, and you get that. Um, Let me see, because Reuben, I think, was it Reuben? Reuben slept with one of um, our forefathers. Um, let me see. I'm spelling his name wrong. Lockia. Uh, and three. Now this is when um our forefather um he was basically Israel's prophecy concerning his sons. These are the prophecies that's going on today. Right? So now when it came to Reuben, though, the oldest, it says Reuben, verse three, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might. And the beginning of my strength, the excellent, the excellency of my dignity and the excellency of, of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. So let's read that in the N NLT. Verse four. But you are an unruly. You are uh, as unruly as a flood and you will be first no longer. For you went to the bed with my wife. You defiled my marriage couch. So Reuben slept with our forefather. Hey, he slept with his, he wasn't supposed to sleep with her. He slept with his father's wife. So the history is there, man. You, we can't be ashamed of it. I mean, it's, it's there, it's written. <laughs> what the fuck you gonna do? You see what I'm saying? But these dudes, man, they real sensitive. They, 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 they about that woman doctrine shit. Hey, man, we love the women of, of Israel, man. Shit. But, man, when it straight comes down to it, we understand what's going on. It just is what it is, man. It just is what it is. <laughs> I mean, damn. But anyway, you go as you go through this list of 
sexual is immorality, sexual immoral things. I mean, hey, things happen. But a third cousin, fourth cousin, shit like that. I mean, that that's that that shit is lawful legally, you know, as far as scriptural wise. But a person would be like, but y'all cousins in today's time. That's your cousin. What y'all doing? And that shit happens a lot in the South. Hell, a lot of the times, hell, you don't even know that you even sleeping with a, a, a close relative in the South because Esau, you know, used to put bags over niggas' heads and have mama messing with the son, son dealing with the mama, daughters dealing with their dads. You know what I'm saying? See, Esau got a lot to pay for. That's where you get that term, from my understanding, motherfucker. You know, because back in the days, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Esau would just put a damn bag over your head and you ain't know who you was dealing with. Reproducing, you know, getting pups out of your ass. Anyway, verse 8, Leviticus 18 and 8. Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives, for this would violate your father. Do not, verse 9, do not have sexual relations with your sister or half sister, whether she is your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born into your house, household or someone else's. So this is when the laws came into um, play. See? See, Abraham and Sarah, they was brothers and sisters, but they was living by the, you know, by the the um the, the gods of their father's house. That's why the Lord, you know, pretty much he he awakened Abraham and told him to get up out of that country and get away from his father's house. And that he, you know, the promise that the Lord gave him would be something totally different. So all these laws or that that that's written down here would be things that, you know, hey, he was, you know, he would have been guilty of before. But there was no law on it at the time. So really, he wasn't guilty of it in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Verse 10, it says, do not have sexual relations with your granddaughter, whether she is your son's daughter or your or your daughter's daughter. For this would violate yourself. See. So that, that, that lady said that. Her dad's grandmother and her grandmother were first cousins, I think it was. Which is shit kind of weird still. Yeah, still weird. Anyway, but that that's, you know, a Western mindset. From that standpoint, I don't think anything is wrong with that particular relationship. Because if I'm not mistaken, that would be a, a, a third cousin or even a second cousin. Because even, at, you know, in a, in, a, in a sense of a first cousin, it's not like... um. Right, right up close and personal, personal like that. But let's read on. Let's see. Verse 12. Do not have sexual relations with your stepsister, the daughter of any of your father's wives, for she is your sister. Do not have sexual relations with your father's sister, for she is your father's close relative. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, for she is your mother's close relative. Do not violate your uncle, your father's brother, by having sexual relations with his wife, for she is your aunt. Do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. So you must not have sexual relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. For this would violate your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. And do not take her granddaughter, whether her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, and have sexual relations with her. They are close relatives and this would be a wicked act. So if you a dude, you dealing with a woman, even if you know what I'm saying, you might step in. She, it might be your stepdaughter. She might not even be your real daughter by blood. You know what I'm saying? But you're not supposed to deal with her and her daughter. That shit caused strife and contention. All kinds of chaos, man. But people can, can literally die from that shit. Verse 18, while your wife is living, do not marry her sister and have sexual relations with her, for they would be rivals. So if your wife was to die, you can actually marry her sister. Now, in America's um, way and Western thinking, that would be fucked up. I can't believe that lowdown nigga. He was already watching her. And look, I thought, I always thought something was going on with them. You know how that shit go. Verse 19. Do not have sexual relations with a woman during her period or menstrual impurity. Do not defile yourselves by having sexual intercourse with your neighbor's wife. And you know that's 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 real big here in the Americas, man. And, and Esau is legal here, because Esau don't do nothing about it. Verse twenty-one: Do not permit any of your children to be offered. Okay, so that was the end of the sexual part of it. 
And I'm going to end out there, man. I just wanted to touch on a few things because you got, I, like I said again, IUIC, man, the way that they, you know, and, and, and a few of these guys, man, the hardcore they go about grape, girls being 13. I, I gave a testimony the other night to the apostles or the elders that one of my sisters, well, I know my grandmother, she was 13 when she started having children, you know what I'm saying, and, um, you know, but one of my sisters, right? She's not, she's not even that old. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But she had her first baby when she was 13, right? My, my niece, 13 years old. That's happening throughout the Americas. Motherfuckers acting like that don't happen. She had her very first daughter at, th at 13. So guess what happened? My niece grew up. Soon as she turned 13, she had a baby. Which made my sister a 26-year-old grandmother. Think about that. Ponder upon that for a hot second. 13 years later, it's another generation on the planet. 26 years old, my sister is a grandmother. And damn near a great grandmother. I don't even think, she, I mean, shh, come on, bro. So let's stop it with the, uh, 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 you know, this guy, um, um, Deacon ASAP. They want to have sex with 13-year-old girls. Like, man, look, ain't no niggas running around here having no sex with no 13-year-old girls. But let's just be real. It, the shit is happening. Come on, bro. Let's just be real. See, when it comes to the scriptures, I, I, I love uh, and um, Elder Malcolm. He went in today, too, on a lesson on, on this guy, man. You know? He out here basically calling our, our apostles super predators for just teaching the scriptures and bringing out the scriptures the proper way. It is what it is, man. Stop being a goddamn uh, 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 wimp, man. That's pretty much what it is. You wimping and simping for these women, man. And it's all about money. You know what I'm saying? Because they, I think they're congregants. They probably got way more women in their congregation than they do men, you know. And they're catering to them just like the Christian church do, you know. But you got to bring the scriptures out. Ask one of these Christian women what they think about a, a man having multiple wives. That's when they're not a Christian no more. Oh, well, I don't believe that part of the Bible. That was in the Old Testament. The hell out of here, man. Anyway, I'm going to end out there. I don't want to keep this lesson long. I seen this because <laughs> it was so funny to me because the way she was acting. Let's play it back again. She was the way she was acting. <laughs> she was just so she was it was so yucky to her. And we get it. You know what I'm saying? We get we get the Western mindset on certain things like this. It is. It can be overwhelmingly yucky to you. Like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck y'all talking about? But it's in the Bible, man. It's, it's the scriptures, man. Let's see. <laughs> no! Listen. Dad's grandmother and my grandmother were first cousins. <laughs> And she's in Utah. <laughs> Have a genetic disorder. I guess if anything turned out bad, it's her ass funny built to sell. <laughs> but anyway, you know what I'm saying? I mean, hey, it is what it is, man. Shit, hey. The, the, the shit happened. So, hey, suck it up, man. You damn, you, 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 you damn, yeah, you brothers, man. You, you can't come into this truth, man, and be all weak like that, man. Accept the scriptures, bro. Scriptures is what it is, man. With that, call me a solo.